your Bibles, please, and turn to Mark. We're going to be in chapter 12. Mark chapter 12. Good to see everybody back. Uh, we had three folks raise their hands for salvation this morning. Amen. That was a wonderful thing. Uh, we had three sets of visitors come back to see us again, which was wonderful. And we had a good crowd this morning, and I, I thought we had a pretty good service. I thought the Lord blessed in a very real way. Uh, I don't know how many years ago it has been, but it was this time of year uh, when one of the, and, and, and when I say the things I'm going to say tonight, please understand that we are surrounded at Bethel Baptist Church with some of the greatest Christians in history. And, and, I, and I mean that with all of my heart. We just lost Brother Carl. Uh, we know that we are surrounded. We've got Brother Harry with us. I, and I understand. I'm not trying to put anybody on a pedestal, but there are certain folks uh, that are my heroes that are right here, right here in this room, and, and I watch them and I love them. One of my favorite people that has ever walked the face of this earth, my favorite, it was Mary Reinhardt. There's no doubt about it. She was one of my favorite people. And I, I just have enjoyed that. I, I've been very blessed to be surrounded. And godly ladies, too, I'm telling you, godly ladies, Miss Arlene, Miss Sue, uh, just surrounded, uh, just godly ladies. But it was at this time of year, and it's been years. Uh, and I, how many remember Miss Mary? Uh, good, I'm glad a lot of us remember her. Uh, she was something very, very special. I, I want to just talk a little bit about her life. I don't know what has prompted me to do this except for the Lord. I, I think the Lord wants me to tell this, and I think it could help us. Amen? So I want you to take your Bibles. I want you to look with me at Mark chapter 12, and we're going to read verse 41 through 44. Uh, verse 41 through 44. Let's all stand together, stretch our legs. Won't be here long tonight. Mark chapter 12, verse 41. Mark chapter 12. And verse 41, And Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury and many that were rich cast in much. Now understand this, Jesus still sits by the treasury watching what we're putting in. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I knew you'd put money in there, preacher. Anyways, verse 42, And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. And he called unto him his disciples and saith unto them, Verily I say unto you that this poor widow has, hath cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance. But she of her want did, she, did cast in all that she had, even all her living. When I read this, this is the widow's might story. When I read this, this is Mary Reinhardt. That's what I see. If any of you got to be close to her or got to talk with her, this was her. We're going to talk a little bit about her tonight, try to help us some. I, I think it'll help us uh, to kind of put our own life in perspective and how good God's been to us. Amen? Amen. Let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. Brother Jordan, lead us in prayer, please. Amen. You may be seated. The title of the message tonight, Brother Austin, is The Wealth of the Poor Widow. The Wealth of the Poor Widow. If you knew Mary at all, uh, everybody that I've ever spoken to about Miss Mary has a, has a memory. Uh, and what that memory might be with her could differ from person to person. But generally, everybody has some memory about what Miss Mary uh, was, who she was, what she did, the way she acted. And in my opinion, I don't think any one person that I've ever met could ever say one thing uh, about Miss Mary that was a bad thing. I don't believe anybody would have a bad word to say about Miss Mary. And if you ever said a bad word to Miss Mary, you wish you hadn't, I'll tell you that. But uh, I want to go through four things that Mary had. And I want to talk about this just a little bit tonight. Uh, when we talk about our own life, sometimes, how many, how, let me ask you this, how many of us ever had a pity party? It's amazing how few of us come to that. Amen. I, we, we sit there and we're at the own pity party. Uh, and, and we talk about Mary. I think about her life. I, I think about this. Mary had in her life very, very many challenges of her health. If you knew Mary at all, she had diabetes that was wicked, not just normal diabetes. She had diabetes where she had to, she had to test her blood 
almost every couple of hours to see if it was on the right place. It would be down to as far as 50. It would shoot up to 400. Miss Mary, it, it, it seemed like uh, between Miss Rosie and I and some of the other folks that helped, uh, it was just a, a contest to see who would find poor Miss Mary passed out. She just, she lived alone uh, and it was one of those things where her blood sugar was so crazy uh, that she always had to have uh, some orange juice or a piece of candy or something like that with her. Not only that, she had heart issues. Mary took nitro pills like they were Tic Tacs. She always had though, and you could see her. She, she would sit right about where Brother Sean and Miss Nicole were, maybe one row up. That was Miss Mary's seat, the, the most waxed seat in the whole place. She would sit there and you'd see a tear come in her eye while preacher was preaching. You'd see a tear come in her eye. And it was a tear because her heart hurt so bad uh, that you could see her get into her purse and get a nitro pill and put it in there. She, she was one that would take two, three, four of those things. And, and it would, she lived with doing this every single day. So Mary had desperate challenges of the health. Mary had very little money. Mary Reinhardt had, <laughs> I've never met anybody like her when it came to her funds. Now, please understand, I'm not disparaging anybody in this room. Everybody in this room is tremendous, but Miss Mary had very little money. That poor lady, uh, she was the widow's mite. She had the widow's mite sitting in her home, and she was one that had very, very little money. She had those challenges in her life where she couldn't do very many things because she didn't have a lot of money. Mary didn't have a house that we could call a real house. Mary had a home that was a small, dilapidated Adobe over on Smith Road. She had a little house that could probably fit on this platform twice. She had a little house that was 8 million degrees in the middle of the summer and 10 million degrees in the middle of the winter. She was a lady that was responsible for global warming in Rootstown. She was responsible for it. In August, she would have me come over and clean out her little furnace. She had a little uh, space heater furnace that would probably heat a, a house that was 2,000 square feet. But bless God, it only needed to do 200, and it did it very well. We'd light that thing, and she'd say, turn that up. You know you're going to have to turn that up. And so I would turn it up. Bless God, we, her, her tank would get filled with fuel. That fuel would last about 16 minutes. About 500 gallons of fuel, 16 minutes. She needed more fuel. She literally had that thing lit all the time. But Mary's house was held up by wallpaper from the 1930s and paint. That's what it was held together by. I remember a uh, preacher and I helped her take down her building out in the back and uh, we took a couple of boards off here and there and I leaned on it and the whole thing fell down. And that's not a joke. That is honest to goodness, serious talk. We knocked it over and man, the mice went everywhere. They said, what are you doing? So it was, it was something that Mary had. By the way, uh, when I first moved here, as I was about 22 years old, uh, we had to uh, chase Miss Mary off of her roof because she was putting her own roof on. She was 100 then. I don't know how old she was when she died. She was 100 then. This lady was up on her roof in her shoes that were from the 1910s that she had darned. And it was, all, it was more uh, darning, by the way, for the kids is where you take thread and fix the hole. These shoes weren't worth 50 cents. New, they weren't worth 50 cents. But this poor lady loved her shoes. You could give this lady a piece of used Kleenex, and she would think you gave her a bar of gold. She lived in a place that every single gift that anybody ever gave her from this church, whether it was good, bad, or indifferent, was displayed proudly on an old orange juice stand. She had a plastic orange juice stand, four shelves on that thing, and every little knickknack. That, were, that was given to Miss Mary was displayed right on it. And by the way, she knew everybody that gave each one of those. She knew where it came from, when she got it, from the babies all the way up to older folk. You gave her something, she had it displayed proudly on that orange juice stand. If you took a marble in Miss Mary's house and put it in the corner of any room and let it go, it would end up in the middle of her living room. And it would get there quickly, by the way. That's how much her floors went down. We tried to put plumbing in the house, and bless God, we couldn't get plumbing enough to give her a shower, so she had to take a bath every day. Well, Miss Mary got to 100 years old. She couldn't take baths. Or she had to take sponge baths, that poor lady did. She didn't have a house that anybody would be proud of. But that house, her and her husband built. He built it 
out of wood from the sawmill. From the sawmill. That's a place where they make wood out of other wood. Her husband would bring it home and use it for the foundation. She didn't have block for the original house. The original house was old trees that they cut up and laid on the ground. The addition, which they painstakingly put on, was about 10 by 10. That made up more of her house than the rest of the house. It had a concrete floor and patio block foundation. And she would tell you the story about all of it. Proud as the day is long. She had her pills <laughs> in a big tray on her table. I can't wait to see you again, Miss Mary. I can't wait to see you again. 30, 40 bottles. And that's not a joke. The doctor had her on so many pills. Every time she'd take one, she'd flip it over so she didn't forget what she already took. You'd walk in there, she was halfway through her pills by 9 o'clock in the morning. I said, Mary, what are you doing? I've been up since 2. I'm getting ready to have dinner. She didn't have a very good house. The house wasn't very much to talk about. But she built it with her husband. And boy, she was proud. I remember when the church put siding on that house. She thought she was downtown. White vinyl siding. It took, it took seven minutes to put it on. It's only three pieces. We only need three pieces to do the whole house. But bless God, she thought that was awesome. Mary had very little family. Old Chucky. I don't know if you know. You don't have to know all of this, but old Chucky, that was, and boy, what a good man, Chuck. Chuck, good man. But she didn't, she didn't have very much family. She sat at home every night alone with her back door open. I said, Mary, you're going to have to lock that door. She says, I can't lock the door. She says, then how are you going to get in? <laughs> I said, Miss Mary, I'll get in here. Give me a key. She said, you don't need a key. I'm leaving my door open. <laughs> and by the way, she never, she never locked it. And she never, ever lost her wits. She had an answer every time you gave her a question. I'll tell you that. So I said, Miss Mary, what's, what's, what's going to happen if somebody breaks in here? She said, looked around the room. What are they going to take? <laughs> she had very little family. Mary had challenges of health, very little money, a small dilapidated house that her and her husband built, and very little family. But Mary took her strength, the strength that she had, and gave it to us. Miss Mary, when I first moved here, her and Aline Burt, I don't know if you remember Aline Burt. Aline Burt was my very first funeral that I preached, Aline Burt. They were about the same size. Uh, Miss Mary was about five foot nothing, and Miss Aline was about five foot nothing. And they would come in here and they'd clean every week of the world. There was never a week that Miss Aline and Miss Mary didn't come in here and clean. I'm going to tell you right now, if I were to do this in the middle of church service, Miss Mary would have a heart attack right there. Throw something at me. She did. She, I'm telling you, the way the carpet was around here, I don't know if you remember this, but the way the carpet was, you could see a wax ring around the pulpit from her spraying the pulpit with wax on her hands and knees at 90 and wiping it off. She would go home exhausted. She would go home in tears from pain. But what health she had, she gave to us. She gave to the Lord. Everything that that lady had, she gave to him when it came to her strength. When I first moved here, I remember Miss Mary making pies. 20 pies for the senior program. 20. 20 pies. For a lady that has no money, 20 pies. No health, 20 pies. Can't eat sugar, 20 pies. I can't even make a cake in my house without eating half of it. She 20 pies and she'd roll into the church. 
two hours before the senior program start because she left the night before to get there. <laughs> she would pull in and unload every one of those pies one at a time if nobody was there and walk them in and put them on the, uh, uh, the countertop. Shoot, back then we had uh, stainless steel carts and she'd put them on there. And she'd feed everybody, and everybody would ask her right away, which one's are sugar-free, Mary? I don't want those. But she had to make one so she could have some. Everybody's birthday got a cake. She made a cake. And every week, the pastor's home had a cake in it. Every week. There was never a week that we didn't home, go home with a cake. Wait a minute. I thought this lady had nothing. What she had... She gave to him. She took her strength and gave it to others. She took her money and spent it on others. Now I'm going to tell you a story. You're not going to believe this. If you don't remember Mary, you're not going to believe this. Oh, I think preacher was averaging 300, 350 in those days. We had a tree that was out in the foyer. And the first year I saw it, I, I was amazed. I, I didn't even know who did it. But I go out there and there are 300 presents under the tree. And it ranged from boxes this big to boxes this big. And everybody's name was on a present. I said, what in the world? This is all right. Where's my name? And I got it. The first year, I believe, my wife and I got silverware. David and Tammy, an eight-piece set, eight forks, eight knives, eight spoons, silverware in a box. I said, wow, that's awesome. Do you know that Miss Mary bought a gift for every single person in the church every year? Every year, she took what she had and spent it on others. Oh, she didn't have much. And to be real honest with you, it was so overwhelming getting the gifts that it didn't really matter what was in them. I mean, it didn't matter uh, that she would give a salt and pepper shaker to a five-year-old. It didn't matter because it was Miss Mary and it was the greatest thing in the whole wide world that this widow that had no family, this widow that had nobody that was around her, this widow that had no money, this widow that had no home, this widow that had nothing, we looked at her, she had nothing, would come in with a car because she left the night before <laughs> with a car filled with gifts to give to every person, every person. Listen, Christmas time, I get fired up with just my own family. She gave something to everybody that came in this room. And she had them waiting. And by the way, I don't remember Miss Mary ever asking us to thank her. I don't remember Miss Mary asking to ever be in the bulletin. I don't remember Miss Mary ever asking for anything. She took her money, she took her strength and gave it to others. She took her money and spent it on others. She took her house and used it to warm others. And some, literally, you couldn't stand outside of her house and not feel the degrees incrementally increase as you got closer to the house. My soul. You can't even stand at the door. It's like a blast furnace. You get hit with it like you're in a convection oven. I told Mary, how can you stand it? She says, I feel great. Her little voice. Oh. What do you mean by warming others? As a kid preacher, I used to go and sit with her. And, and not all the time. Should have done it more. But I used to go sit with her. Because I was worried about her. Fix her furnace or whatever. I was worried about her. She was older and I just worried. And she says. She told me stories. She would tell me about how she used to take eggs that their own chickens had made, not from Walmart. And she'd take the eggs, scoop them up, put them in a basket, get on her horse, <laughs> and 
and ride with the eggs to market. She would sell the eggs and maybe hope to get a dime. Would you ride 10 miles with eggs to get a dime? These kids wouldn't roll out of bed for a dime. These kids wouldn't bend over and pick one up walking out in the parking lot. Now, of course, a dime was worth more like 10 bucks back then. But then Mary's house, it didn't have water for a couple of decades. What would they do, preacher? Well, they had these things called milk cartons, milk cans, whatever you want to call them. They're five gallons each. Mary was just about three inches taller than a milk can. She would put a wooden yoke on her shoulders. A wooden yoke on her shoulders and carry the empty cans down to the creek a mile away. Fill them both with water and carry them back. That's 10 gallons of water, almost 100 pounds. This was when she was a little girl. She didn't weigh 100 pounds. She took those memories and those stories and the, the and by the way, you sit in her house for 10 minutes, she'd have you there for two hours. I mean, just was, was, she was a talker and that's what she did. Couldn't hear you at all, but she could definitely tell you a story. <laughs> Don't come in there when she's got the TV on. She'd never know you was there. She the TV screaming. It's unbelievable. A little 19 inch screen like that. They had 19 inch, not, it's not this big, 19 inch. She'd sit there and stare at that thing and it was so loud you could hear it when you pulled in in the truck. And she would tell those stories and she would talk about you. She would talk about Pastor Skyver. She would talk about the deacon. She would talk, and what I'm saying talk about, I mean how much she cared. She didn't have a lot of strength, but what she had, she gave it to others. She didn't have a lot of money, but what she had, she spent it on others. She didn't have a great house, but what she, but she did have, she used to warm others. And number four, she counted on her church to be her family. I know I like to talk to you about this, and I know I say this quite often. But please understand this. I consider you my family. That's not something I say lightly. I consider you my family. Most of you have known me for decades, not just a couple of years, decades. I've been here for 25 years, October. 25 years. Can you imagine? Good Lord, have mercy. Why you haven't kicked me out is beyond me. 25 years I've got to see some of the greatest things. And I understand this, that that lady counted everybody that was in this church as her family. She wasn't buying presents for people she didn't know. She was buying presents for her family. She was buying presents for those she cared about. She didn't have a lot of presents to buy for people in her house. And we're going to rush down uh, and get around the Christmas tree and open up gifts. She never did have children. But I'm going to tell you, she treated everybody here as they were her children. Now, preacher, why'd you bring all of this stuff up? I don't understand why you're talking about Mary. Well, first of all, I, the Lord brought, me on, brought her on my heart, so I wanted to tell you a little bit about her. But I want to tell you this, too. In all this, in all this, in all the problems that she had, all the struggles that she had, all the things that faced her, all the things that were against her, this woman was by far, and I mean this with all of my heart, was by far the happiest, most joyful, most thankful lady or person I have ever met you want to talk about the widow's might we met somebody as good or better than her why because she took what God gave her even though it wasn't much and she turned it into something that could never be measured she took it in and turned it into something that could never be held back what's the challenge to you today the challenge to you today is number one realize what you have good Lord have mercy realize what you have it's so easy in this day and age to complain about what we don't have. And if anybody in this world's ever had the right to complain about what she didn't have, it was Mary Reinhardt. And if you ever got to be at her, it's not even any longer there. By the way, her house should have been put in a hole long before it was. I'm going to be honest with you. That house was rough. 
But she never, not only did she not complain, she praised God for it. What's the challenge? Realize how good you've got it. Boy, we've got it good. Number two, realize that although we may have struggles in health and strength, bless God, give what you got to him. Realize how good we've got it. Realize how wonderful we've got it. I remember Miss Mary was struggling, suffering inside the hospital. Last month of her life, Miss Rosie, oh, she sat by Miss Mary's side uh, the whole way. Uh, she looked at Miss Rosie like a daughter, and uh, I think Miss Rosie looked at her like a mother, too. And, and, and boy, boy Miss Mary got bed sores and things like that. She was struggling. Bless God she wouldn't complain. She told the doc, I'm going to be seeing Jesus soon. I, why would I be upset? She told Miss Rosie, don't you dare let them try to bring me back to life. I can't wait to see Jesus. With a smile on her face, she talked to you every time. I went in to try to encourage her. I went out encouraged. We may not have much health. There may be problems that we have, but bless God what we do have. Man, let's give it to him. You may not have the most money. And, and it's just, I did not do this to help fill the plates I, I, that, that, you guys are great givers most generous church in the whole wide world but nobody outmatched the generosity of Mary Reinhardt nobody and I've seen some givers come through here now nobody met what Miss Mary not just put in this plate I mean, she would put her tithe in I mean I think her tithe was only a few bucks a month and she'd put it in but what she gave was ludicrous What'd she give it to? Um, this is my end and I'll, I'll quit. She gave it to her family. I want you to realize how good we've got it. This church is special. Do you know every missionary that comes through here says it? And, and I, I don't believe they're just trying to get bookings. I don't believe that. Uh, Dr. Gray comes through here and he, he just texted me yesterday. And he said, I miss you, preacher. I've been praying for you. It's not, it's, and I don't tell you that because I talked to Dr. Gray. I talked to, I talked to Dr. Gray, whatever, he's my friend. He says, you got something special here, preacher. Do you know what it is? Family. Family. I, mean, I believe we care about each other. I believe we really do. I talk about this widow's might, and I, every time I read this, I, I literally think about Mary. It's the first person that pops in my head when I read the widow. I read about her. Because I believe this widow did something amazing that caught Jesus' attention. Would you not agree it caught Jesus' attention? This, this widow, and I, hey, I'm just telling you what I believe. You can take this for what it's worth. I believe this widow was special. She pales in comparison to Mary Reinhardt. Pales in, well, that's a Bible care. I don't care. I don't care who it is. She pales in comparison to Mary Reinhardt. If you never got to meet her, you will. She's in heaven right now. Can you imagine when she walked into the place that Jesus has prepared for her? Oh! Oh! Well, where can I go make pies? We, we are blessed. We have been blessed for over 25 years here with the thought of family. And the reason that I believe Mary was so happy, she did have a great relationship with the Lord, I believe that. But the Lord brought her what she needed. She needed to have the house that she had, the money that she had, all those things. But I think the thing she needed more than anything else was the family because it's something she really didn't have, except for this church. When we talk about her and talk about ourselves and think about our, the, what we have here, it's a wonderful thing to know that I'm surrounded by brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm surrounded by people that care. And by the way, each one of us are. It's not just for me, it's for everybody. Knowing that we have this going. So I guess the question is, should we allow it to stop? I think we should keep it the way that it is. I think we should keep loving each other and caring about each other and praying about each other and realize that in all the things we have, we should by far 
be the happiest, the most joyful, and the most thankful church in the whole wide world. Amen. Why? Because we have him and we have us. I mean, I don't know if I could make it without each and every one of you being part. I know that Miss Mary could have never made it without each person in this church being part of her life. And she gave back just a little trinket to every single person to show them. I still have some of the things she gave me. I still have them. I, I kept them because I, I just don't want to ever forget that wonderful lady. I, I just think she was special. Now, I believe each and every one. Please don't. I, I know I'm holding her up right now. I don't want people to meet me later. Well, I'm special too. I know you are. I know you are. You are. Everybody's special in his or her, or her own way. I've heard the song. But I think when, when, if you knew her, you would agree that there came a certain poor widow. And she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. And he called him unto his disciples and saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that Mary Reinhardt hath cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast into their abundance. But she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. If there's anybody that lived for him and her family, it was her. Amen? What a wonderful lady. I thank you for allowing me to take time to talk about her. I thank you for that. What a challenge it is to see if we can be happy in the midst of what we have. Amen? Let's pray. Dear Lord, we love you. We thank you so much for this evening, Lord. I thank you for Miss Mary. What a blessing she was to my life. And what a blessing she was to all these folks' lives. I, I don't know if I'd make it without Bethel Baptist Church. Lord, I'm so very thankful that you've given us something special here. Everybody sees it. Everybody knows about it. And I'm so glad that they do. It's something special because we have family. It's something special we have folks that care about each other. It's something special because we know that we can uh, work together for a common goal. That goal is to get closer to you. That goal is to help each other. And I believe that we can do that. Lord, I believe Miss Mary's in heaven right now. I believe, Lord, that she's close to you. I believe that there's any mansion that's a big one, she's in it. And Lord, I believe that one day I'm going to get to see her again. But I think she left behind some godliness, some ladylikeness, some Christianity that each one of us can enjoy. I, I would love to aspire to be like this lady. And Lord, I thank you so much for everything she's done for you. Lord, thank you for this church. I believe we're filled with folks just like her. And Lord, I'm so very thankful for that. Lord, please bless us. Bless them. And Lord, let us thank you and praise you for what you've done for us. Let us thank you and praise you for what you've given us. And Lord, let us be willing to give it back to you. Lord, thank you so much. We pray these things in Jesus' name.